Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the first episode of the full smart money concept series and I hope all of you guys are excited. Let's say you are a curious kid and you ask me to explain what smart money concepts are in a single sentence. Then I would say smart money concepts are a few methods of identifying, planning and executing trades on the basis of where the majority of market orders are and what the major market direction is. So in a nutshell, it all comes down to figuring out the market direction and where the major liquidity is there for taking. So as you might have already guessed, the initial step is to identify the market behavior at a particular time period. Or to be more precise, we are interested in identification of a proper market structure so that we can plan our trades based on the dominant market direction. So in this video, we are going to deal with the idea of market structure with respect to smart money concepts. Now you may ask me, haven't we already discussed the concepts of market structure and market trends in the price action course? Actually, yes we did. But when it comes to smart money concepts, market structure identification involves a lot more abbreviations, new terms and stuff like Bose, chalk, strong highs, strong lows, weak highs, weak lows, etc. But the overall idea remains the same. I personally think that with smart money concepts, you will get to understand market structure and its working in a much greater detail. And in addition to this, we will also get a clarity on the major market structure and the minor or internal market structures. And we will also talk about the nature of pullbacks for both these structures. So let's get going right away. Now you may be familiar with the fact that a liquid market or a stock or any asset goes through several market phases. Majorly the accumulation phase, the markup phase, the distribution phase and the markdown phase. Now there can also be sub phases like the reaccumulation or redistribution phases. But my point is that even though there are several phases of the market, the overall market structure boils down to three main stages or trends, namely the uptrend structure, the downtrend structure and the sideways or range bound market structure. Now, as you may already learned from the price action course, an uptrend is characterized by higher swing highs and higher swing lows, while downtrend forms when price forms lower highs and lower lows. And when it comes to sideways market, there is no clear trend or price action or simply the price remains within a range. Now this is a very basic way of understanding market structure and trends. But in this video, let's build on top of this basic idea. So in smart money concepts, we are mostly interested in trending price action when compared to sideways or range bound price action. But this does not mean that we can completely avoid sideways ranges. And it is not the right way to think about it. Because further forward in this course, we will definitely talk about how to deal with or trade on range price action. Meanwhile, let us now focus on the two main structures based on SMC technique. Now these are the bullish market structure and the bearish market structure. So think of a bullish structure as an uptrend with many more constraints. And on the opposite, think of a bearish structure as a downtrend but with a lot more constraints or factors to consider. First, let us take a look at a typical bullish market structure. And yes, you are right, we need to look for higher highs and higher lows. But market structure is not always that easy to identify. It is more complicated and challenging than we think. I personally believe that if you get this particular step right, then you will be able to get most of your trade analysis correctly. In fact, this is the step where most people make mistakes. So when you commit a mistake at the start of your analysis itself, then naturally the rest of the process will obviously amplify the initial mistake and finally you will be left with a corrupted and incorrect analysis in hand. And guess what? All of this will result in a wrong trade at the wrong time and the wrong location with you making huge losses. And at the end of the day, you will have no idea where things went wrong. So my request is that you strengthen your basics first. Now with that out of the way, let us understand a bullish market structure. See, as mentioned just now, market structure will not always be very easy to identify and mark. Sometimes it can be confusing and complicated. Take a look at this chart. At a single glance, can you determine the overall market structure? Well, most of you would not be able to. 
actually this is a bullish market structure and why do you think you are not able to identify this the simple reason is that your eyes are not trained to look for specific details let me explain this now you might have learned that market moves in the form of waves and during a trending move there is an impulse move and a corrective move this is true and i don't have any problems with this idea but what needs to be added in this context is that a market structure comprises of two structures that is there is a major structure and there is a minor or internal structure and as the name suggests the major structure is the dominant structure or it is the major structure that determines the dominant player in the market now the minor or internal structure is the less important structure that gets formed within the major structure so if you are planning to be an smc trader then you should train your eyes to spot these major market structures in comparison to the minor structures because it is the major structure that majority of our trades will be concentrated on now you may ask me which time frame we should look for the major structures now we will get to this topic of time frames in a later on video but for the time being keep in mind that we have to look for the major structures on the higher time frames for our analysis you can check out my detailed video on time frame selection to learn more about how to select proper time frames based on our trading styles moving on let's learn how to map the major market structure and also discuss what the break of structure and change of character is now this is important because it helps you confirm the major swing points that is it lets you confirm the higher highs and the higher swing lows in a major bullish market structure from the minor swings which actually behaves like noise in our analysis similarly it can help to confirm the lower swing highs and the lower swing lows in a bearish market structure from the minor or internal structures now take a look at this the market momentum is bullish the market created a low and a high then the price made a retracement or a pullback then once again the price moves higher and breaks and closes above the previous high now this is called a break of structure or simply boss or spelled as b o s it is also called as a continuation break as the price resumes in the major trend direction so technically a bullish break of structure happens when the price breaks and closes above the previous swing high or the higher high please do note that the price has to close above the previous swing high level for this to be considered as a valid break of structure just a liquidity sweep or simply a false breakout associated with a long wick does not qualify as a break of structure in addition to this only when a bullish break of structure happens then only the higher swing low level is confirmed and as you may know a higher low is the lowest swing point which is higher than the previous swing low level in a bullish trending market structure now what happens after a bullish break of structure how do we confirm a higher high now listen to me carefully price rarely moves in a straight line if you observe within a larger trend there are almost always counter trend moves these counter trend moves are the results of lower time frame liquidity hunting so once the price bounces or get rejected from a level then normally it will target a previous short term high or low before continuing in the same direction as the longer term trend and for some of you this might be a very new concept and by the way this is called as an inducement which is a very important topic in smc and we will discuss this concept in our upcoming episodes and once we get used with all these small topics we will combine all these concepts to finally understand what a true smc structure looks like and how it works in a very practical manner but for the time being let us go ahead and understand how a higher high of a major bullish structure gets formed using a concept that most of us are already aware of it is none other than pullbacks so the price breaks the previous high and it moves higher but it cannot go higher indefinitely at some point it has to come down which we call as a corrective move so we can say that a bullish market structure is a combination of bullish impulse moves and corrective pullbacks now you can ask me do all these pullbacks or corrections matter the answer is no we are more interested in those deeper pullbacks now how do we know if a pullback is deep enough 
For this purpose, we can make use of the Fibonacci retracement tool. So a deeper pullback is a retracement that goes beyond the 38.2% to 50% or even lower Fibonacci levels without closing below the previous swing low or higher low levels. The reason why we require a deeper pullback is because there is a lot of liquidity available below these internal pullback levels. And for the market to make a meaningful move, it has to tap into these retailer orders and then use these orders as a fuel to move higher. This is a very simple explanation of a much complicated concept. I hope you guys have understood what I am trying to explain. Anyways, once we have identified a deeper pullback using Fibonacci retracement tool, we can now mark the highest point after the previous break of structure as the higher higher level. And now once again, if the price moves higher and if it manages to break and close above the recent higher high point, then again we have a bullish break of structure. And this step will confirm the higher low level, which is in fact the deepest pullback before the break of structure has happened. So in short, a new higher high is confirmed only after a deeper pullback has happened which will actually sweep all the previous retailer liquidity below the internal or minor swing lows and on the contrary, a new higher low is confirmed only when a valid bullish break of structure happens. Now what happens when the market fails to make a new higher high? That is, the break of structure fails, but instead the price breaks and close below the previous higher low level. So if you have watched my price action course carefully, then you know that this is the first sign of a change in the market structure from bullish to bearish. Or in other words, we can say that this is the start of a new trend reversal. And in smart money terms, this shift in the market structure is called as a change of character or simply chalk. But do keep in mind that the price has to break and close below the previous higher low for the chalk to get confirmed. This is very important as many traders make mistake in this part as just a liquidity sweep or a false breakout with a deep wick projecting below the higher low does not qualify. Once a change of character takes place, we will now focus our analysis towards the formation of either a bearish market structure or a sideways market structure. We should consider the possibility of both these structures until and unless we get a solid confirmation for the continuation of the bearish market structure. Let me explain this in greater detail. We know that during a downtrend or a bearish market structure, we expect the price to form lower swing highs and lower swing lows. So if you want to be an SMC trader, you have to train your eyes to find these important levels. But trust me, it is not as easy as you think. Because in most trading textbooks, we will find a very simple and straightforward method of identifying market structures. But in real market scenario, it is much more complex. So listen to me carefully. In order to confirm a lower low in comparison to the previous swing low, the price has to do a pullback. Not just any pullback, but a deeper pullback taking out the liquidity of the previous internal swing high levels. Now you can identify if it is a deeper pullback or not by using a simple Fibonacci retracement tool and check if the pullback is over 38.2% or 50% or even higher levels. But as long as it does not break and close above the previous major swing high level, we are okay with it. Now what is the significance or maybe what is the logic behind wanting a deeper pullback? Now the logic is quite simple and it is associated with the retailer mentality. So as a retailer, what will you do when you spot a breakout or a breakdown? Obviously, you will take a trade in the direction of the market break, right? Now, where will you place your stop loss? Quite clearly, you will place it beyond the breakout level. So in case when a retailer sees a bullish break of structure, most probably he will place his stop loss below the previous minor swing low level. And if we spot a bearish change of character, he will take a short position and he will place the stop loss just above the previous minor swing high level, right? Clearly, these swing levels just before a breakout or a breakdown, or in other words, these swing levels just before a break of structure or a change of character have a lot of stop loss orders available. These stop loss orders are in fact retailer liquidity, which the smart money is so keen to exploit. And these clusters of stop loss orders helps the smart money to buy low and sell high. 
Now coming to the reason why these deeper pullbacks are important. It is quite evident that these deeper pullbacks are actually searching for retailer liquidity and once the liquidity is absorbed, the market usually tends to continue strongly in the major trend direction. So we have to look for a deeper pullback after a change of character has taken place so as to confirm if the low formed is actually a lower low or not. Don't worry if you have not understood this concept completely. You can either watch this concept multiple times and still if the doubt persists, you can wait for the upcoming episodes where I will talk about inducements, order blocks, etc. so that you will get a deeper understanding on the smart money concept structure mapping. Now moving on, after the deeper pullback, taking out the retailer liquidity and confirming a lower low, the price moves lower and it breaks and closes below the recent lower low level. This is called a bearish break of structure or simply boss. I'm stressing the point that the price needs to break and close below the previous low level to confirm a valid break of structure. Just a liquidity sweep or a false breakout with a deep wick projecting below the lower low level won't count as a valid break of structure. Now only when a valid break of structure happens can we actually confirm the lower high level. So long story short, a lower swing high is confirmed only when there is a valid bearish break of structure. And on top of that, the lower swing high is the highest point before the boss and the previous lower low level. And all the other swing highs are just the internal or minor structures and we don't have to give much importance to these. As an SMC trader, the major structure matters to us the most. And we conduct the analysis for our major structure on our higher time frames to get the best possible results. Because in the lower time frames, charts are more random and noisy. Now once again, the price has to search for liquidity in these intermediate or internal swing highs. And in doing so, it forms a deep pullback, which sweeps the liquidity in those levels and then moves lower. Now once the liquidity is absorbed by a deeper pullback, which can be measured using a Fibonacci retracement tool, we can confirm the new lower low level. Then again, the price has to move lower and break and close below the new lower low formed to confirm a valid break of structure and in turn, the highest point before the boss and lower low will be marked as the new lower high level and this process continues until the price fails to break and close below the previous lower low level and instead it breaks and closes above the previous lower swing high level. Now what does this indicate? This actually signals a change in the sentiment or it can be thought of as the first indication of a reversal. That is, the trend might change from bearish to bullish. So this shift in the market structure is called as a change of character. So now we have to change our perspective and we have to look for a bullish structure or a sideways market structure. And by now, you might already be familiar as to how to identify a bullish market structure, right? But hey, I haven't talked about the sideways market structure, right? But you may already be familiar with the accumulation or distribution phases from my price action video. These are phases where the market takes a break or where the big institutions start building their position which is actually represented by the accumulation phases or where they start selling their holdings which is called as the distribution phase. Anyways, the sideways market structure can be any of them. Think of it as market taking a pause or a breather. And only when the price breaks and close above or below the constraints of this phase are we really interested in making a move. So as an SMC trader or a price action trader, it is always ideal to wait out the sideways market and focus more on the trending market phases for your trades. Now before I finish this episode, I have to discuss a few more terms like strong highs and strong lows, weak highs and weak lows etc. Now these are just additional information which is built on top of what we have already learned in this video and it's nothing new. So a weak high or a weak low refers to those swing highs and lows which have a greater possibility of getting swept. So for example a higher high is considered as a weak high as it has a good possibility of getting taken out by a bullish break of structure. And similarly a higher low is considered as a weak low as there is a good chance that a change of character can take out this higher low. 
on a same note during a bearish market structure a lower low is marked as a weak low as there is a good chance that it can be taken out by a bearish break of structure and similarly a lower high is considered as a weak high as it can be easily taken out by a change of character so in short a weak low or a weak high has a greater chance of getting taken out by the market contrary to this strong highs and strong lows are those price levels which are not easily taken down by the market so typical examples of this are the higher highs just before a change of character meaning that the market was not able to take out the higher high level which makes it an important level for future price analysis as it could play the role of a potential resistance level in the future similarly a lower low just before a change of character is considered as a strong low for future analysis because the market was not able to take out this level and it can act as a meaningful support level in the future now other than these uh, there are equal highs and equal lows and as the name suggests they have same high or low levels now we will understand the significance of all these as we move along this course but i think this is enough for this particular video and after a few more episodes we will revisit this topic once again but then we will discuss the topic completely using relevant charts be it forex charts or nifty or bank nifty charts anyways uh, i would like to end this video by mentioning that market structure makes up the backbone of the market and it is essential in understanding if you want to be able to read the market more precisely and clearly so as to be able to trade in it successfully and if you like the content of this video then please do like and share this video so that it reaches more people who want to learn and trade and if you are new to this channel then don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell notification so that you will receive all new video updates when we upload a new episode so as always keep learning back test what you have learned and implement it in your trades so as to see if it actually works for you or not i will see you guys in the next episode till then bye